Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In one of our previous videos, we have discussed how different speeds are achieved in some types of manually operated gearboxes. But the gears in all the gearboxes that we have seen so far have fixed axes. In this video, we are going to see a gearbox where some gears can rotate both on its own axis and about some other axis. By this time, you would have guessed our topic. Yes, we will be discussing about the epicyclic gearbox today. So let's get into the topic. Epicyclic gearbox, also called a planetary gear set, is usually employed for high torque transmission and higher speed reduction. This gear set is also used in automatic transmission systems. This setup is compact and occupies less space when compared with the other types. When it comes to construction, an epicyclic gear set consists of a sun gear, planet gears and a ring gear. Sun gear, also known as a central gear, is located at the center and it meshes with a number of planet gears, which revolves on its own axis and also around the sun gear. The planet gears are in turn connected together by means of a cage or a carrier. Then, we have the inner ring gear, also known as annular gear, which surrounds the system and meshes with the planetary gears. The planetary gears are in constant mesh with the sun and the ring gear. This is the simple layout of an ordinary planetary gear set. But how does this system achieve speed reduction? The system has three gears, but all three are not used to transmit motion. The input motion is given to one gear, while another is used to extract the output. The third gear is fixed and stationary. This is the reaction member. The desired speed reduction is achieved by changing the driving, driven and the reaction member. Now, let's see how that works. When none of the members are fixed, no power will be transmitted and the gears will rotate independently. This arrangement provides us the neutral gear. Now, let's fix the ring gear and let the sun gear and the carriage be the driving and driven members respectively. When the sun gear rotates, it meshes with the planetary gears, making it spin in the opposite direction. As the ring is held fixed, the planet gear rotates over it. Now, we can clearly say that the sun gear should rotate a number of turns for making the carrier rotate once. This stage gives us the highest speed reduction rate. When the sun gear is fixed and the input is given to the planet carriage, the ring gear serves as the driven member. When the carriage rotates, the planetary gears move over the sun gear and also mesh with the ring gear. At this time, both the input and output will be in the same direction and the speed reduction will be lesser when compared to the previous stage. So far, we've seen the speed reduction stages, but how is the reverse gear achieved? For reversing, the carriage of planet gears is fixed and the sun gear is provided with the input. At this time, the planet gears act as idler gears, making the ring gear rotate in the direction opposite to that of the sun gear. Thus, it reverses the motion of the output. On the other hand, if any of the two members are locked together, then the input and output rotate at the same speed, giving the speed ratio of 1 is to 1, that is, direct drive. This is how a planetary gear set can provide different speeds. But there is a need for changing the input to achieve speed reduction, which demands a very complex mechanism. Automatic transmission systems employ a compound planetary gear set, that is, two or more planetary gear sets connected in series. This setup makes it easier to change the input and fix gears according to the requirement. We'll be discussing that in a separate video. So that's it for this video guys. We'll meet up in the next one. Until then, bye.